Hey everybody, I'm Dr. Richard Stevenson and I'm the Director of Education at Stevenson Dental Solutions. I'm also Emeritus Professor of Clinical Dentistry at UCLA. And this is our teaching center where we conduct many hands-on courses all year long. And today we're going to continue with our PFM series on the Kilgore Typodont and we're going to perform the preparation on the canine tooth number six. So let's remember that this will have a shoulder on the facial, chamfer on the lingual. And you can see the measurements that are desired. And in the area between the chamfer and the shoulder, you're going to have this transition zone that takes you from a shoulder bevel to a chamfer and a shoulder bevel on the other side to the shoulder. And this is going to occur in the lingual portion of the contact area. That way we'll be able to maximize aesthetics on the facial. So the burrs we're going to use for this are the ones that are used by many schools, the 6847016, which is a coarse diamond, followed by the fine diamond 8847016, the end cutting burr 8839012, which is an optional burr to use, and then we have an interproximal burr, this 850012, and then the chamfer burrs, the 6878K and the 8878K. And then, of course, the footballs, the 6379 and 8379023s. You know, most burrs we're going to use will be the typical tapered, flat-ended diamonds and the chamfer diamonds. Those football shapes probably will not be helpful on this tooth because it does not have a negative contoured fossa. Really take a look at this tooth from the side. See how it's turning from one angulation to another and spend a few moments to memorize the contours on the facial, the length of the tip, and then the shape on the lingual. One of the things that makes this tooth a little bit tricky is that it has a, a fairly short cingulum and it also, in occlusion, does not give you a very good idea of how to reduce it based on the opposing tooth. So you only you already have a millimeter space back here on the distal, right? So, and there's 1.5 millimeters. We're showing this with an RGS-4. Uh, so when you're finished, you should have three millimeters of space there, maybe 3.5. Now one trick that I've tried over the years, and it seems to work pretty well, is to go ahead and take a pencil and mark the edge of the canine on the lower facial surfaces and you can later on use this as a reduction guide. So just remember we have three planes of reduction, one, two, and then we have that third plane on the facial. So before we start the facial, let's get going on the incisal reduction. And we're looking to reduce here 1.5 millimeters. And for that, I'm just using the coarse 6847 burr that'll allow us to remove the tooth structure pretty rapidly. Now this is the third prep I'm using with this same burr. The previous two videos on PFM Kilgore, I prepped tooth number eight and then tooth number seven, and now I'm prepping tooth number six. And this would be about the life expectancy of the burr. And we need to consider that because it'll start creating burn marks. And you'll see the burn marks that I create uh, throughout the preparation as a result of using a burr that probably is past its desired life expectancy. That would be the case when you do not use water. When we add water to the system, we can expand, extend, and hope for a better longevity of the diamonds. I also like to use a diamond cleaning stone that comes with these uh, burrs. The manufacturer makes, makes one of these and uh, can be used to clean off some of the clogged particles. Okay, just neatening up the incisal reduction and getting ourselves uh, to verify how much reduction we have based on those marks we made from before. You can see we're, we're a little under 1.5 compared to the upper edge of that line. So I think that's a pretty good uh, pretty good start. But look at the lingual, there's, there's just zero clearance. 
uh, on that mesial side. In other words, what we just did on the incisal did nothing to give us lingual clearance. And because this is a pretty steep tooth, the lingual clearance and the lingual fossa reduction can be done at the same time by extending the bird downward. And look at the burn marks we're creating. It's always a bummer when that happens, but uh, it's time to buy a new bird, right? <laughs> anyway, uh, I'm looking at the reduction now, and I'm trying to get this to about a millimeter before I carry on with the next step. Here we are in the distal, doing the same thing. Using the known measurement of the tip of the burr to gauge how much we take away. The lingual form is essentially like a roof with a pitch going in each direction. Then when we do our facial reduction, uh, we're going to use depth cuts using the tip of the diamond to get the proper depth for the shoulder, the middle part of the diamond to get the middle contour, and the base of the diamond near the shank to create the reduction out towards uh, the facial incisal. You, so you can see this angulation move that we make, really important. And at first, it, it can seem a little hard to do, but it actually gets easier. You can check this with the RGS 3.4. Uh, you can see here that you've got one millimeter the gingival and then 1.5 at the incisal. I've really sped this up because this is the longest part of the entire preparation, removing all this facial tooth structure. And if you keep track of your initial depth cuts, they can be incredibly helpful to guide the rest of the facial reduction. The key is to get those first two depth cuts or three depth cuts, whatever you want to do, uh, at the proper shape and depth. And I'm just doing this sort of overlapping diagonal strokes to remove the part in between. It seems to work pretty well to remove the tooth structure and then do it in a way that doesn't leave some weird defects behind. You can see the depth cuts reminding us to go deeper axially at the gingival. We still have these little areas that need to be made deeper. When you get to this step, it's kind of fun to trace the mesial and trace the distal with a pencil. And what you'll find is you have the taper of those walls being portrayed before you've actually cut the walls all the way through. You see the curvature here we have on the facial. I'm really happy with how that turned out. And it was because we just followed the rules of one 1.25 and 1.5 off the facial using the burr. This little guy is the 850012 and it's a remarkable needle shaped burr that uh, the wonderful people at University of Buffalo have added to their kit. And I, I like this burr. We do use this burr a lot at, at our teaching center for various things. And it just slides right through and approximately without any worries about hitting the adjacent tooth. Isn't that great? And then you can do a little bit of blending and you can even create a little bit of a shoulder and approximal with this by just putting the full depth in. The tip of the burr is only about 0.6, but you can get a pretty good shoulder started. So now once you have this, let's go ahead and pick up the chamfer burr. This is the 6878K016. And half of the tip is 0.5. So I know our, our goal is to have a 0.5 millimeter chamfer and half the tip of this at the gingival will provide us with that. It's also really important to run this burr up the walls in approximately, take off sharp edges, round corners, so that it does not interfere with the taper of your preparation. When you finish that, at least in the initial cutting of that, you can then move on to the 8847KR016, which is going to be perfect for smoothing 
and refining the shoulder to get it just the way you want it. Whenever I see uh, myself prepping, I always think of how uh, difficult it is to prepare Typodon teeth compared to natural teeth. I find natural teeth to be infinitely easier to prepare, which is good news for you dental students because when you get to the patients in the clinic, it's going to be more enjoyable. But these these skills you're learning, this, this handling of the bird, understanding the principles is really critical at this stage. And you can see that we're just doing that transitional area. On the mesial, it's so easy to see that transition between the chamfer and the shoulder. Now, unfortunately, Kilgore uh, has a manufacturing problem with teeth. They have a mold mark. That's a little seam that goes up the sides of teeth. And no matter how hard you try to prepare this, it's still gonna be there. So we need to remove it somehow. Uh, I would recommend removing it before you even put the tooth in the type of knot, but if, if you're on an exam situation, the only thing you can do is either just leave it or maybe use a hatchet to, to carve it uh, back out of the way by using the hatchet a little bit like you would a curette where you'd be removing calculus. So the preparation is nearly finished. We have to check the occlusal clearance and we can see that it's just a little bit too tight. And I would recommend that you consider either using the Jiffy or a fine diamond to get that last little bit of reduction. Most of the time you're gonna to wanna to prepare the margins of the preparation super gingival by about half a millimeter and uniform if you can. I think the preparation looks pretty good. We're gonna go ahead and take it to the final polish or finish. I don't really like to polish per se. I like to leave it in a matte finish that almost looks like the prep has been sandblasted when it's finished. Uh, but this is a really nice way to remove little defects you might have in the preparation. So here it is, it's completed. Chamfer on the lingual, shoulder bevel transition area, and then a shoulder on the facial, which is one millimeter. And that goes all the way from the, the middle of the contact on the mesial to the middle of the contact on the distal. And we have three planes uh, of, of reduction across the facial that you can see, this kind of gingival middle and incisal. And now we can see how it fits in the uh, type of and the amount of clearance that we're needing to have in this particular situation. And you can see that there's a significant amount of clearance on the distal, and that's uh, because there was clearance there to begin with. And it would be wrong not to reduce because you would have no room to place a crown. So these are situations you need to be aware of, and trust me, your, your graders in school and your teachers all know this. If you're working in practice and you just trying to come up with a systematic approach to restorative dentistry. I hope you found the video today to be helpful. The canine is one of the most challenging PFM preparations to accomplish. In our next videos, we're going to move on to the premolars and the molars. And uh, so I will have an entire quadrant of PFM preparations completed on the Kilgore Typodon. And you can see the first three are completed here. And I want to wish you well. It's been fun. Take care.